Good afternoon, this is Kirsten Hall. Uh, I am the moderator of the Agent Editor Hybrid or Do-It-Yourself Publishing Options of the Deep Valley Book Festival Virtual Cabin Fever Book Event of 2021 of March. Um, anyway, all right, so we are uh, getting together and, and I thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. We're gonna get to know everyone. Oh, Chris just got here, perfect. And we're gonna get to know everyone. Everyone's gonna give us a brief introduction of who they are and what kind of publishing style that they do. And then uh, I've got a few questions for them and uh, we will watch the Q&A, the chat box though. If you have uh, questions, we'll get to those first because I just have some filler questions to keep everyone occupied for about the next 45 minutes. So here we go. All right, uh, the first one up, I'm gonna pick up Chris because Chris is late to the game. Who are you and what kind of publishing style do you work with? Okay, uh, hi everybody. My name is Chris Norbury. I am uh, started writing in 2008, back right about the time that uh, independent publishing was just becoming more than vanity press. Uh, so I started writing thinking I was just going to do traditional publishing because there was no other option. But as I went along the process and over the years, I found out that hmm, this independent publishing is starting to take off. There's um, a, lot of, a lot of legitimate and well-known authors are, are going into that. So I uh, decided for my personal situation, which is being an older writer and not having the, the time or the patience to wait, for that magic uh, getting the agent and getting the contract, I decided to self-publish uh, for a variety of reasons. But, um, and then now, you know, 10, 12 years later, uh, self-publishing is a viable option for a lot of writers and it works really well that way. So that's where I am. Okay. All right, on my screen up from Chris is Diane. Unmuted, okay, hi. I'm Diane Windsor and my publishing company is called Motina Books. And my tagline is that we publish books by and for mothers. I started dabbling in self-publishing a while ago, probably in the late 2000s, like 2007, 2008. And I kind of did it off and on for a bit, but then I recently, about four years ago, I realized that I really am probably a better publisher than a writer. And I want to help women and moms get their stories out there because so many people have a great story to tell, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, and they're good writers, but because it is so difficult these days to get a publishing deal with one of the, the big five, it, I just wanted to help people get their story out into the world. Um, I am located in North Texas. I'm a little far away from Minnesota, but I do have Minnesota ties. I've got some family up there and I love it. Um, and I operate as a traditional publisher. So while I, I really don't take any money upfront for my services, such as cover design, um, book formatting for ebook, paperback, hardcover, all, all that good stuff. I do expect the author to have some skin in the game. You know, there might be some marketing expenses that they need to pay for. If there is a cover designer that they really want to use, maybe they handle those costs as well. But then we we share the royalties, you know, once the book is published. Okay. And that's it. All right. Ann, you're up next. All right. Hi, I'm Ann Abitz, and I am the owner of Kirkhouse Publishers. Um, we're located in Burnsville, and Kirkhouse was founded in 1994. We acquired Kirkhouse March 1st of 2020, so 13 days before the entire world shut down. Um, but we've been we've been in business since uh, the late 90s as Fusion Press and Fusion Print. We started as a mom and pop print shop had our first client, um, a book author that um, gave us PDFs and then we printed the book and shipped it to her. But um, now we're doing everything from the cover design to distribution. So we do everything in between. Okay. Perfect. All right, Phyllis, you're next. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Phyllis Coldeye from Brookings, South Dakota, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you to the organizers and to you for showing up and being part of this session. I'm a writer and poet and public speaker and composer, kind of whatever doesn't pay well, I do. And uh, I started out in traditional publishing and uh, then I have done some uh, independent publishing. It kind of depends on the project and also uh, how impatient I am to get the work out there. Uh, because this uh, event is being hosted in Minnesota, I'll uh, highlight uh, this book, which is Beneath the Same Stars. If you like historical fiction, this is for you. Uh, this is based on events surrounding the U.S.-Dakota War of 1862, which took place largely in southwestern Minnesota. So I hope that you'll visit my website, phyllisColdeye.com, and if you join one of my reading circles there, uh, you'll get a rich sampler of my work. So happy to be here. Thank you. Susan, you're up next. All right. My name is Susan Stradiato. Uh, I would also like to thank the Deep Valley Book Festival Committee um, and Kirsten for hosting this panel. Uh, I am, so I started off as an independent publisher, only publishing my own work. Uh, I started that in 2017 is when I began um, the process. My first book was released in 2018. I have since um, released oh i'd have to go back and count but but i think i'm to the point of almost 20 books uh and i a lot of them are mine um but i've had a few people seek me out uh for the expertise that i've developed um over the over the last few years and <laughs> As a result, I have registered my company now. It's Bronzewood Books is the, the title of it. And I am an, a hybrid publisher. So I do some independent publishing of my own work. I have um, some, some packages that I would offer to people who don't necessarily want to go the traditional route. It would have previously been considered a vanity press. However, I do not believe in that term because I think there are legitimately people out there who don't want to do the tasks that it takes to get their book into the market. However, they, um, they still want to be in control of their royalties. They don't want to have that, that creative burden or that creative stifling. So they still want to have that say and they want to be the decider effectively. Um, so I, I believe that there are some people like that and I will offer those services if necessary, um, if people like that. Uh, I will also, I am also offering traditional publication services. I am publishing for another author in Minnesota this year, a trilogy, a, a historical suspense trilogy and um, another memoir for another Minnesota author. So I, I'm expanding to traditional publication this year as we speak, which is super mm -hmm. exciting. I'm also um, working on getting certified as a professional editor. So we do have editing services that I will be offering also. So okay. growing, feeling good. Evolving. Evolving. <laughs> yes. All right, Peter, you're up next. Yeah, thank you, Kirsten. Yeah, my name's Peter Bremer. Uh, I'm uh, the author of a fantasy book called Treetops. It has environmental themes. Um, I self-published that novel in September of 2020 through Amazon. Um, since then, I've also um, distributed the book through Ingram Spark, so it'll be available to folks that uh, aren't on the Amazon platform. Um, and I also have it available um, through um, some other um, avenues so that folks that don't want to download it from Amazon, they can find it on Barnes and Noble and other places. So, um, but yeah, this is my, this is my first book and it was a lot of fun, but a lot of work to actually figure out how I was going to get it out in the world. So I'm, I'm happy to share my story. Okay. All right, Jay, you're next. Hi, I'm Jay Viner, coming in from Omaha, Nebraska. 
Uh, I have blue hair and today I am wearing a purple and turquoise flowered scarf. My wall behind me is pink with black stencils and my book cover, Jane of Battery Park, is a poster behind me. Uh, I am a debut novelist, so Jane of Battery Park is my first novel and it's coming out from an uh, independent publisher in Los Angeles called Red Hand Press, um, which is uh, kind of like the not as famous or as big in terms of distribution as Grey Wolf, but not as small as like the bottom end of independent uh, presses. Uh, I do not have an agent and in for the Red Hen model, uh, you sign a contract uh, and there's no like advanced royalties. Okay, and then Jason. Hi, thank you all for having me. Um, I am Jason. I have sort of moved through a lot of different ways to have things published. Started off with small indie publishers and did some self-publishing for zines and anthologies online. And now for the past four or five years, I've been working with Macmillan's graphic novel division for a second. Um, I write and illustrate graphic novels. I'm also a special education teacher for 22 years now. Um, so many of the things that I write and draw revolve around um, those labeled with disabilities and disability representation. My last trilogy to just finished up this year is called Last Pick. Uh, there's book one, there's book two, and there's book three. Um, it's about aliens that come and they take away everybody, but they leave behind the ones that they deem to be disabled. And spoiler alert, those are the ones that save the world three weeks later. Um, yeah, I uh, also have an agent, so happy to talk about that too. Thanks. Okay. And then lastly, there is myself. Uh, my name is Kirsten Hall. I am currently um, co-publisher of Fox Point Publishing. <clears throat> um, evolving is the way, is the key word here. Back in the late 90s, I used to write and publish a, um, a bridal magazine for West Central Minnesota and the Eastern Dakotas. And then in 2005, I wrote my first book. And then in 2014, I jumped into publishing and writing full time. And being that I kind of knew my way around, I started off as a self publisher. But um, yeah, it doesn't matter how much well, in my experience, how much money and time you put into something um, self publishing didn't get me anywhere really fast. So um, I had successes with my books and people started noticing and then said, you know, you should help me. And so that's what it was. So we we hung out our official sign for business as Fox Point on January 1st, 2020, just in time for a pandemic because, you know, good timing. <clears throat> Anywho, um, this last, uh, it originally started with myself and another author. And over the course of 2020, we gained about 18 more authors and about 30 more support or yeah, about 20, 30 more people helping us out uh, during the month of February. We put out seven books, two of which are these large, very large books. So we're, we're having a good time. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on, all that good stuff. All right, so the next question we're gonna put out there um, to everyone. Well, let me see if anyone has come up with questions and you guys can all save. Oh, no, that's chat. This is Kirsten figuring out things. It's Q&A. Okay. okay, Nadia says, Pete, has anyone ever told you you look like Stephen King? Okay, well. <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> they 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 do tell you that. Not that's the first time, but I'll I'll take that I guess. So okay. well, maybe some of that popularity will rub off on me I guess. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So one question I have here, and we'll go around again too. And um, when we do, if you have your book, um, some of you didn't hold your book up when you introduced yourself. So be sure you tell a little bit about that, and then um. Do, what advice would you give out to an aspiring, I can read, an aspiring writer? So if someone wants to get uh, writing and then get into, get their book published, what would you um, tell them? But first hold up your books that you have. Okay, so uh, we'll start with Chris again. A little bit late. Okay, um, two books, self-published, Straight River. Actually, they should be like this, read them. Read this one first, this one second. It's a, a it's going to be a series. Of th working on a third book. Uh, I decided, uh, like I said, the the self publishing. But the, the advice to 
uh, any aspiring writer is that it get ready for a long, hard slog. And probably the biggest takeaway that I found is that today, starting writing right now, you have to be a business person and an author. And it can be, it, you don't want it to be more business than author until you have a lot of books to sell or a lot of products to sell. Because if you're all business and you're marketing the heck out of one book, you're not going to get a lot of return on your investment. Uh, I made the mistake of kind of doing that right off. It's like, oh, I do every festival and every thing I can think of. And, and fortunately, I didn't buy a lot of online ads or things like that. But I spent a lot of money on promotion, just going to festivals and going to book signings and things like that. But when you only have one book to sell, you know, maybe you'll sell six, eight, ten books in a, a, an afternoon at a bookstore. But like I went up to Grand Rapids when my first one, it took me a four hour drive to get up there. Uh, went up, had brought my wife, we had lunch afterwards and, and my gas cost plus my uh, meal cost didn't, you know, was way more than, than what I earned on my books. So that's my big advice is you have to be the business person because even if you, unless you land the mega million dollar uh, book contract with one of the big five, uh, you're going to have to do most of the work yourself. And it, it's time intensive or it's money intensive if you pay somebody to do it. And it's a lot more expensive than I originally thought it might. So go in knowing that it's really hard, it's really tough, and it's going to cost you a lot of money and time up front. Yeah, Melinda mentioned in the chat here that it's two full-time jobs. And, and yeah, yeah, you work part-time by about 80 hours a week Yeah, times two. All right, Susan, how about you? All right. Um, so I books since Kirsten is yelling at us. The Muse of Winter. <laughs> so this is my little fairy tale. This um, I wrote this as kind of an experiment in voice. It, it's a little bit different than almost anything else fantasy that you might see on the market. Um, it's very lyrical. Uh, it's almost poetic, but it's not structured like poetry. Um, so it, it's it's an interesting little experiment. It's not very long, um, and it is uh, about a little girl who um, is you know, she represents a season, obviously. So it's about change, really. Um, and it came out in January uh, for the winter. And I expect it'll be mostly a seasonal read, but but it's a lot of fun. Um, I am giving away a couple of copies of this one during the, the, the festival. I also, this year, am releasing a series called The Serpentine Throne. I have, uh, let's see which way, yep. This is the first one in the series. This is the second. These are advanced review copies that I have right now. Um, I have five books in this series. They're not, they're not super long books, um, but it does, the entire series will be out in 2021 by August. So I'm doing a one book a month release plan on this one. Um, I, I'm not going to show the rest of my books because that would be a long, <laughs> a long winded affair. So my advice to aspiring writers is to focus on the craft first. Um, get your craft out there and get your entire story told before you start diving into the business side of it. Um, and like Chris said, be prepared if you're looking to go a non-traditional route for um, quite a, a, a learning curve an expensive um, endeavor. It, it really is an entrepreneurial area that you will be investing a lot into if you're, if you're going down the road of self-publishing or even um, establishing your own publishing company as an independent publisher. Um, so with that, I will say that I've made the mistake of getting stories partially done in a series and getting one released and then kind of losing steam because I focused on the business aspect. So if you're serious about getting your voice out there and getting your story out there, get your story on paper before you start worrying about the other things. And then when you when it's time to worry about those other things, it's going to be a long haul. It's not going to be, my story's done, I'm going to release it in six months. It's something that if you're learning about the publishing industry and trying to get your book published, 
if you try to slam it out there, it, it goes into almost a void. So you really need to be prepared to see that story, um, you know, get all the development around it, get all the marketing around it. Do it in a way that's going to get going to reach people, because if you just slam it onto KDP, it's not going to hit the it's not going to hit your readership. And that's that's the that's one thing that can just kind of tear writers apart. So that's my advice. So uh, Phyllis, um, you already showed your books. If you want to show a few of your other books and um, touch on those briefly, and then what would your advice be to aspiring writers? Uh, I have eleven coming up on eleven books, and so I think maybe I won't I won't bother you with all those. But I I write in a lot of different genres, and uh, depending on the genre and the project, I I go a different direction with the with the publishing. Um, I in terms of of advice, I'm always a little reluctant to give advice generally, uh, but. Um, one thing I would say is, uh, as others have noted, this is a this is a lot of work, and so um, don't lose your writing time. Guard your writing time very carefully, or you're going to end up uh, really resenting your situation. And um, the other thing is uh, that learn from other people. Uh, if you don't know something, ask questions but also don't give other people uh, veto power over whether or not you do something. You know, if you really feel committed to a certain project, find a way to do it. Uh, I had a, a situation last uh, February where I was on a writing retreat in San Diego and unbeknownst to me during that retreat, the first American had died of COVID. Uh, nobody would know that for a couple of months. But while I was on that retreat, I, I had, a, uh, had a dream and basically there was uh, the text of a book delivered to me. It sounds really weird, but, but anyway, um, it was called For the Sake of One We Love and Are Losing. And it's all about grieving. And that, that book needed to come out in a very special way. So I turned it into a special edition that is only available through my website. I, I could have taken that to a traditional publisher, I, you know, but there was a very uh, specific kind of energy and vision for that book that I had. I wanted to be able to sign every single one of them personally because whoever was gonna order that book was going to be grieving. And I wanted to be able to inscribe the book myself. Uh, so it was not about a, a commercial project. It was, it was really about the heart. And uh, so, you know, give yourself permission to follow the thread of any particular uh, project that you're working on and, and let it teach you how to do it. Yeah, good advice. Um, Anne, how about you? Um, so Kirkhouse Publishers has about 400 titles. So here are the last few. Um, so we did uh, The Confidence to Speak. Uh, we do a lot of self-help. Um, our mission is publishing for a cause. So a lot of our books have a cause, all of them do. Um, and what advice would I give to aspiring authors? If you are choosing to go with a hybrid publisher or a mentor press, um, do your due diligence. So after the craft, like Susan was talking about, um, really talk to more than one person. Don't just go to one company and find out if their goals and their mission meets with your own for your book. Um, I've seen it so many times where authors are just in a hurry. They're in a hurry to get their book out. Like she said, they slam it up on KDP and then they're embarrassed later or they're not proud of their work. And that's the saddest thing to me is not being proud of what you did because it's a lot of work. So you don't want to rush the last part of it. Yep, that's very good advice too. Diane, how about you? Um, yes. So the books that I've done recently, this is one that I wrote. It's called Stuck. It's a young adult 
novel kind of in the same lines as uh, John Green. It's got childhood cancer and the whole pro-vax, anti-vax uh, issues that are happening around the country right now. And then this is one that I published um, in September of last year, How People Get Their Politics by Julie Samrick. And it is a nonpartisan um, book where she interviewed a lot of different Americans about how they formed their political opinions to try to kind of, you know, heal the the country a little bit. I know that's kind of a cliche saying by now, but um, just so that we aren't fighting with each other, our neighbors and our family and our friends and everything about politics, try to hear each other and understand where they're coming from. Everybody has a valid opinion. Um, I really agree with what Anne said about not going with the first publisher that you happen to meet. There are you know, so many different organizations, different companies that that are doing this and they have different methods and you want to make sure that you're a, a good fit and that you do share the same values and everything. But also, even though I'm a traditional publisher, I think hybrid publishers are great and authors should not be afraid to pay for services. I mean, we, we pay to get our hair done. We, you know, pay to go out to dinner and, and we're happy to pay for all these other services in our lives. And it's so important for a self-published author or an independently published author to really create the best product possible so that it's up there on the same level as the, the books that are published by the big guys. And it's absolutely possible. You know, smaller independent presses do that all the time. They can do a great job. So don't be afraid to pay for that. But at the same time, you don't want to get fleeced, right? So there, there's, you got to do some due diligence. You have to go talk to different people. And also, um, no matter how an author goes about being published, they are going to be expected to do a lot of their own marketing. There is no one magic pill for selling your books. There's no easy way. You're going you're gonna to have to you know, try things and some things will work, some won't work. A lot of people do pay for advertising today, like Amazon and Facebook ads. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and, but that is also something that takes, that takes work and takes training. And you're just gonna have to, to think outside of the box and find the best way to market your own book. All excellent advice. Yeah, I, if you notice, I keep going, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. All right, Jason, how about you? Um, yeah, um, really good advice all the way around. I, I, I would say, um, I tell my students this a lot, I, I think it's really important to finish something. And that something can be really small. Um, so I guess I'm thinking, talking to people that are just maybe trying to dip their, their feet into writing or illustrating or really anything. Um, once you write something, you're a writer. Um, you're part of this group. And it's really magical in the way that happens. So my first book, I mean, it's coming up on maybe like 14 years ago, Homesick was semi-autobiographical about my mom's uh, uh, breast cancer, her battle with that. Um, so I, um, I did it for myself and I finished it. And then suddenly I was part of sort of the graphic novel comic book community. And it's amazing how that happens. Um, you get to show up at festivals and cons, you get to talk to people online and say, hey, I'm a comic creator. And once you've done that, that starts to sort of, um, there's a support system that comes from that and it really lifts you up um, and it's 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 amazing feeling so I, I i would say that the best advice i give is really just finish something um you're not going to love it uh if you're anything like me you're going to see uh, all the problems with it but um you created something and the next one is a lot easier to do also once you've got that one behind you so that's that's my big advice is um make something my other advice is um appreciate the stuff that comes later because I think we're talking a lot about the hustle and the hustle is really real. And that hustle makes it hard to, I think, appreciate what you have because you're always looking for that next thing. So, I mean, going back to that, I mean, all I ever wanted to be was a comic book creator, but it's really amazing how fast you want more once you get this. Oh, well, I didn't know I could get it published. What about this? And then you get that, what about that? That constant hustle is a tough way to live, I feel like. So um, really appreciate where you're at. Like if you always thought you'd like to be like in a panel, 
um, you're on one now, like we're all on one and that's pretty cool. So um, anyway, I think that's it. Thanks. There you go, you're welcome. All right, Jay, how about you? Uh, so my book, Jane of Battery Park, is about a Midwestern woman who grows up and is part of a family of, uh, we'll call them grassroots terrorists, who are trying to reform America by putting celebrities on trial for their sins. She decides that's not really her thing, and she goes out to Los Angeles to try and be part of the bigger, wider world and learn about food and culture and music in what we can call the secular uh, or pop culture. And uh, she runs into this problem where she's trying to restart her life and have a new identity, but she falls in love with one of the celebrities who was targeted by her family. And so that kind of creates some problems. I started writing the novel in 2012, um, which was a while ago, and it was just signed two years ago uh, with Red Hen. And uh, so my journey was basically this idea of start big, and deal with the rejection until your options dwindle. Uh, so I was reasonably young. I had very high hopes and self-belief. And I was like, yes, I am a big, what at the time was seven, big house publisher. This is a commercial novel. Everyone will love this book. Uh, and that didn't happen. Um, actually, I went to an MFA program and the person who ended up being the editor that bought this book uh, really also believe that. And so I think one of my big pieces of advice is that it's okay to dream big as long as you realize that um, the market is tricky and people have a gazillion reasons to reject your book. One, uh, we're pretty sure that agents didn't want to represent my book because of uh, the fact that it has a Midwestern woman and that just can't be relatable because the world revolves around New York, right? even though it takes place in LA, the whole thing is in California. And then an actual agent told me that uh, she had described my book to another agent and they had a very visceral reaction to this idea of terrorists kidnapping famous people, which would be interesting to try and sell it now because we did have terrorists kind of trying to kidnap people this year. So that's fun. Uh, so I think timing is really huge and being able to know that things are subjective and it's not you, it's really not you is important. The second thing that I've learned this year that I think I really wish I had known like 10 years ago is that book sales, book, whatever, everything about books is about relationships. And so for an aspiring writer right now, uh, the thing that you can control is your reading and your relationships. So whatever project you're working on right now, if you read, the books that are like that. So whatever market you're envisioning, self-published books, indie books, big five books. So you're reading those and you look in the acknowledgements and you see, okay, who's representing this book? Who do they thank? What was their journey to publication? And if you love that book, send them an email, follow me, find them on social media and tell them that you like them and maybe ask for advice. So one of the things that I didn't do uh, is develop relationships or allow myself to be seen by people who are ahead of me in the game. And that's really important for access to all kinds of things at whatever level uh, and just knowledge of how the, the game works. So that's, that's what I would do. And that's a cheap thing because you have a library card, you can read books for free and, and it gives you an awareness of how the game is. Very good advice. All right, Peter, how about you? Yeah, um, well, let me show you my, my book here. So this is the actual cover of my book, Treetops. And a shout out to Sarah Reed, who actually did the cover art, which I, I think is amazing. Um, so yeah, so I, I self-published that, you know, as I said before, through, through Amazon. Um, but, you know, for years, I was just writing the book, um, and I didn't really even think about what I was going to do with it for a long time. And I think that's probably the best advice I can, I can give folks, you know, who are writing maybe a first book or a first whatever, is just write for yourself. Um, an author that I admire a lot um, once said, if you don't apply the seat of your pants to the seat of your chair and write, nothing else matters, right? And I think that's true, right? I mean, nobody else is going to force you to do the work. I mean, you, you have to be the engine of that. Um, but you should, you should write for yourself and not, not think about what's going to come after, right? 
um, just write it and then, yeah, and then definitely think about what's the best fit for you. Now, for me, you know, I actually, you know, I did try to get an agent. I went to some writing conventions. I bought time with agents um, and it just didn't happen for me for this book. And that was okay. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually really glad that I self-published this book um, just because I got to control all the different aspects of how it was going to be put together, what it was going to look like. Um, I hired my, you know, my professionals. I hired them as freelancers through something called Upwork. And there's a ton of places that you can actually find people and you can, you can find people that are a good match for you. You can review their work and you can figure out, you know, is this person going to do, you know, are they going to do my cover the way maybe I, I want them to, right? Do they get me? Do they get my book, right? And we all know, right, there's a lot of advantages in being published through a traditional publisher, but you don't often get to even pick your title or your cover. And if you are self-publishing, um, you know, you do oftentimes, you get you get those choices. Those are yours to make. Um, so, um, so yeah, that would be a little bit of advice. And then once you actually, once you actually have your book finished, um, you know, really give some thought as to how you want to get it out there. So as I said, I published through Amazon. It was just, that worked for me. But then I also did some homework and figured out, well, you know, sure, Amazon's great, but, you know, if you don't, if it's not orderable by retail stores, because retail stores aren't going to order through Amazon, um, that's not going to, that's not going to work. So, you know, I, I distributed through Ingram, and then I also have it available as an ebook through Draft to Digital, which will put it on a bunch of different platforms. So, and I'm just learning, right? I mean, there's so much I don't know. I mean, this is just my first book. Um, but, you know, the other thing too is that, you know, you can spend as much or as little, you know, amount of money as you want. I, I know some people that they just wanted to self-publish it and just put it on Amazon or Barnes, and they don't care about paying advertising and publicity and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, it's whatever's right for you, I guess. It's just kind of kind of follow, kind of follow what makes sense to you. Okay. And then and and you're right, exactly. What makes sense to you, definitely. Um, all right, and I'll just hold up a couple of other books that we did um, in February here of the ones we put out. Um, for advice, oh my gosh, like I said, I could uh, talk until the cows come home and pigs fly and all the other good fun stuff. Um, first of all, from an author to an author point of view, don't ever, don't ever let some, well, they will, they'll tell you, oh, you can't do that. You, you know, you're never going to be a writer. I mean, come on, get your head out of the clouds and go get a real job and whatever. Okay. First of all, don't believe them because they're only projecting onto you what they think they can't do. Clearly, probably you can't either. But the truth of the matter is if it's in your soul, you can do it. So just go out and do it. And there you go. Now, I will point out, like Chris said, it's going to be a long, hard slog. First of all, you've got to write the book. You have to create your inventory. And uh, that's, that's fun in itself. Um, write everything down throw nothing away because you can always filter from it later. You know, do it, just do it, brain dump. Um, get, you know, if this is your part-time job for a while, um, do understand your part-time job is going to be about 80 hours a week. Just get used to it. Um, <laughs> there, as soon as you're used to it, it becomes a business there. You, you'll just, you'll just know, you'll be in the role with it. Um, yeah, but that's my, I think probably my two biggest things. You're going to, you're going to, a lot of negative naysayers, they're just going to be like, oh, you can't do that. That's so stupid. Don't do that. Well, you just go and do it. And that'll, there you go. And then um, you're going to put a lot of work into it. You're going to put more work than you ever thought you were going to put into it. And um, yeah, sometimes it's luck. Sometimes it's hard work. Uh, yeah, there's a question yep. asking if Peter can show the inside of his book. Just in terms of what some of the pages look like here. Um, you know, the font choices. And that's the other thing too. I mean, when you self-publish, you actually get to choose just, you know, how do your chapter headers look and, you know, just all kinds of fun stuff you never would have thought about before, you know. Next question. Um, for all of us here as an author, from an author's point of view and as a publisher's point of view, how do you know a book is successful? What is your 
criteria of being successful. And we're going to have to be rather quick on this because we all like to talk and time is marching on. So I'm going to start with Anne first. Really hard question. Um, I think it depends on what the author's goals are. You know, if you are what you want for your book. Um, we publish books that are for people's families. We do genealogy books. Um, we do children's books. You know, I think every every person is different with what they think a success is. Um, and you can look at book sales and you can look at all that, but you know, some people don't care how many books they sell. They just want to get the story out into the world and help people. So I think it's, I think it's helping people and getting a story out there that um, leaves a legacy. Well, that, that's a very good answer for you thinking it was hard, it's perfect. All right, Diane, how about you? I would say that it's if you take a, you know, my independently published book and one of the and a book published by the big guys and you can't tell the difference because the, the quality is so high. And don't skimp on editing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm -hmm, that's exactly it. Jason, how about you? Um, uh, there's a lot of ways to gauge success. I, I, I would say that um, when you're working with the larger publishers, if you do get like a significant advance, though it gets a little more specific on how to gauge success if you want to stay in the game because they need to make that money back. Um, they need to make it back. So, and any other publisher is going to look at that to see if they've made their money back whether before they decide whether or not to pick you up. So um, that is the, the really cool thing about working with big publishers. You can get advanced, but there's also something that can really um, make your life very specific in trying to like get to these hurdles, constantly get to those hurdles. So, um, yeah. Okay. Phyllis, how about you? I was in the middle of looking at the chat. Now I've forgotten what the question was. Uh, oh, success. Okay. Success. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't use that word. Um, I, I think I, I go by my gut you know, and whether I, I feel like I've followed the vision of the project uh, the best that I could. Um, and then there are more practical sorts of things like, um, was I able to break even or maybe even make a little bit so I could throw it into my son's college fund? Um, mm -hmm. You know, but uh, I try to not measure things that's that's crazy but i i just find that i stay in my creative flow better if i worry about the creating and not the marketing and the money and the return on investment and and i know that that is counter to what you're usually advised and i am i'm fortunate because my husband and i before we even got married had decided that we were going to live frugally on his income so that i would have creative freedom not everybody is in that situation. And so they have to worry about the dollars and cents more. Um, but I, I think unless you stay true to your vision as a creative, even if you're really good at the dollars and cents part, you're gonna get frustrated. So, so th that has to come first in my view. Okay. Jay, how about you? I think return on investment is a really terrible phrase and that should not be uttered by authors. That does not. Uh, I don't I don't know how many books I would have to sell to return on, on whatever point I started investing in this book, which no, I don't know. Uh, success for me, I think, um, is a couple of things and they do sadly involve sales. But I think that's also a valid thing to consider because we live in a capitalist country where art it has to be monetized to some extent. So for me, success is selling enough books that my future publications are not limited. So whether that's a traditional publisher or another independent press or, or even just reviews on Amazon, like having gotten enough attention that people aren't wondering what's wrong with the book or why it didn't sell. I don't actually know what number that is. I'm kind of scared to ask, um, but, but it, something like that. Uh, and then the second thing is selling enough to kind of restore uh, the faith placed in me in this book by the press. 
um, because to some extent it was a personal decision. Uh, and I'm, I'm more involved with the press than I than just hiring or signing a contract with complete strangers. So I really want to, uh, I think I'm more motivated to sell it because of that investment, that trust in me than I might have been uh, otherwise. Okay. Uh, Peter, how about you? Yeah, um, I guess success for me, since I'm a self-published author, I don't have anybody, you know, I don't have an agent. I don't have, you know, a small or big publishing house that I have to, I have to write for or meet expectations. So, you know, it's all about for me, can I live with, you know, what I've created, you know, now that it's out in the world, do I feel proud of it? Um, that's kind of the bottom line for me. And yeah, I mean, I look at Amazon sales and how much I'm selling through Ingram or other places. I mean, that's nice. I mean, if you're an author and you want to get your book out there and not just say, you know, I wrote something and published it, but if you want to get it in people's hands, then sure, the more people that you know of that actually have gotten your book and are hopefully reading it, then that's great. Um, but for me, the bottom line is, is really, do I feel proud about it? Right. Cause I mean, if I, if, 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 you know, if I sold, if I sold thousands of copies, but I felt like it was an inferior work or I, I, you know, things didn't go the way I wanted it to, then I, I wouldn't feel good about it anyway. So for me, it's, it's all about just do I, you know, am I proud of what I've done? Yeah. Um, Chris, how about you? I'll echo uh, a lot of what uh, the others said. Uh, monetarily, I would say if I ever got to the point where I broke even on any of my books, that would be a nice personal success. But then I think about my hourly wage over the last 12 years has been in, measured in cents per hour. You know, Even if I paid myself, I could only pay myself cents per hour and I'd still be showing a loss. But I also um, like the, the personal satisfaction idea of, of being able to hold up this book and look at it every day in my shelf or, or wherever it is and say, I'm darn proud that of the, the effort I put into this and, and uh, it, I'm, I'm happy. I have no problem offering to people. And then the third thing that has been mentioned, and this is something that I totally blew me away the first time it happened when, when someone either stops you on the street or comes up to you in a, at a book festival or a signing and they said, I read your book and I absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed it. That I was so blown away the first time that happened to me. And it was a genuine thing. You see it in the people's eyes. They're, they're not just saying it. It's not your mom telling you that it's the greatest thing in the world. It's somebody you don't even know. And they maybe they made a point of going to your book signing to tell you this. And so that to me is success because Anytime you you write a book and sell it to somebody, you're implying a contract that here's something that's worth your time and your money. So if they're going to shell out 15, 20 bucks to me and 8, 10, 12 hours of their time reading it, and they come back to me and they seek me out and say, this was a really good book. Mm -hmm. That's success to me. I, I reached somebody. I touched, I changed their lives in a positive way. That's to me, to me, that's really huge. So that, that's one thing that, that, you know, I'll never be rich on, on, on monetarily, but I've had a lot of people tell me that. So that's just fantastic. Yep. Susan, how about you? Unmute, unmute. All right. So Chris, that was very eloquently stated. Um, I totally, from a writing perspective and an author perspective, you know, hearing hearing that you reach somebody or that your book made an impression on somebody is, is one of the the most heartwarming things um, that I can have as a writer. I've had people who hate my books. I've had people that love them. Um, sometimes I don't even mind when they hate them because they had an emotional reaction to it. And I think that we are in a business that is so so personal and so um so connect you know you've got to it's all about relationships it's all about connecting um that I, I I really I subscribe to that if we reach people with our voices it's not necessarily about money um I'll talk a little bit about the business side of what I would view as success um and where I'm aiming to take my publishing company I, if I help the author reach their goals, I'm gonna, I'm a winner too. So my, 
my philosophy in opening this company is to help voices come to light into the light and help them in a business way that they may not want to focus on or they may not have time to focus on or they may not have the skill set to focus on um so if i can help others come into that realization that is also success for me as a publisher and even as a, somebody who offers author services so as an editor if you have done your best and made and helped them make their work better then that is success too so there's so many definitions of success um the monetary side of it yeah we would all love to see that um but it, it that's icing on the cake at least for me um i know that there was some conversation in the chat about privilege and that is that's a real thing too so i I, that's something I hope to also focus on with my business is to reach, you know, reach people that may not have as much privilege to write and help them encourage or encourage them to write more and bring their voices into that light. So that's where I am. And I will quickly wrap up and then I know we've got one more Q&A here, but um, my version of success either well, pretty much on anything. So any aspect of writing or publishing or whatever the case may be, I'm a self-proclaimed neurotic perfectionist. So a job well done up to my high standards is like, oh, we have another success. Um, so that is, and and really what everyone said is exactly, you know, so I'm just over here nodding my head and that's exactly how I see it, especially if you can get a a reaction out of a reader or when you give a book to a new author, and they are just over the moon and through the stars and off into a whole nother universe. Um, that's that's a beautiful thing for me. So, um, okay, now we have one more Q&A here. Someone was talking about a marketing plan. Okay, someone said, Peter, did you create a business name to publish your own book? So Peter, quickly, do you have a business name? You know, right, right now my business name, it's not very inventive, it's my name. <laughs> But that, but that works. I mean, I haven't really gone down the road too much in terms of incorporating and that sort of thing, just because my book's only been out for a little bit. And I haven't, you know, there's, there's a certain threshold that you have to worry about in terms of taxes and making it, it, it makes more sense to think about creating a business at a certain point financially. And I'm not, I'm not quite, quite there yet. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, it's tax time. So I'll be talking to my tax person about you know, all the money I've gotten uh, in the last few months, I, I, I kid a little bit there. So, but yeah, that's probably, probably down the road for me. Okay. All right. Um, someone had uh, in the Q and A had mentioned something about marketing um, tonight, between tonight and tomorrow morning, I'm going to get this video up on YouTube and I'm going to attach everyone's links through the author directory of Deep Valley Book Festival. So um, all of us will be listed on there. If um, you click on that link and you get onto the email, you can email any one of us. I'm sure we would be more than happy to get back to you about marketing and any other questions. And thank you to everyone who joined us this afternoon. Um, like I said, everything will be in that YouTube content information thing. I know the website's gonna be up for a long time and so is the author directories. Um, for as much work as it goes into putting that website together, no, we are not taking it down tomorrow. I'll tell you that much. So it'll be up for a while for a reference. Um, so yeah, uh, and please share with your friends too. Anyone um, to the deepvalleybookfestival.com, look under author directory and seriously check out all the authors. We have a lot of books. We've got like over 200 books between the 45 authors. But, we have a lot of books. So anyway, and again, all the money goes straight to the authors. So that is, if you talk about success and return on investment, that's a beautiful thing. Please help us out. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Have a fabulous day in your neighborhood and we'll see you hopefully in October in like real live living color. Yes. Wouldn't that be neat? <laughs> all right. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Good to Thanks, talk to you. Thanks, Kirsten. Thanks everybody. Yeah.